Afternoon, folks. I'm outside uh, the Welsh Assembly at the moment uh, with Victoria. Uh, I'm sure you all know the face. Yeah. Hello. Uh, so, uh, what was the group you're with again? Family Superheroes. And that's, that's on Facebook, is it? Yeah. On Facebook, and we are now trying to push forward. We're a CIC, but we want to make um, we want to get charitable status. Um, just because the volume of problems across all the sectors is just it's just growing and growing and growing and growing. Whistleblowers, the protection they need. The whole system is completely ruined, really. So what, what, what's made you come down to Wales today? Well, a year or so ago, I spotted um, what she was known then as Scarlet Winterbottom, because she was banned, banned off Facebook. But I saw Kimberly's um, live, and I just instantly became kind of compelled, like, what the hell is this person saying, why is she saying it, and her fire. I just, I just became attracted to it. So I liked making my own little videos, just as something to do, and I started putting pieces together that Kimberly was doing. And it kind of just made me then go into this rabbit hole of going, what's going on? And if it's happening in Wales, and it's happening in England, where I am, and it's happening in Scotland, and it's happening in Ireland, what can we do? And I've been reaching out, obviously, because it's Kimberly's thing, criminology. My thing um, is, is stemming from the law side of things and the child advocacy. So it's kind of, I wanted to come together. And obviously, I'm now obsessed, thanks to Kimberly, with this RSE education. And I'm trying to spread that love in Devon. And we are having schools opting out now. We have a template that we can use. Um, I speak out um, in public forums about this and direct people to Public Child Protection Wales. So the least I could do was come down when Kimberly said, do you want to come down and talk and, and do it? Because we need to raise you know, the vibration on this. Um, it's been happening, as other speakers have mentioned here today, since the 8th century. The video is getting worse. It's the beginning of the time. Yeah, the beginning of time. As long as there's been humans, there's been pedophiles. And we need, we do, we do need to go at some point, right? There needs to be a break in this. We changed the way that the world looked at women, the suffragettes movement, you know, trying to aim towards equal rights. Now we've done that. Well done. And now we need to move on to children and what children's rights actually mean. And there isn't, you know, we have children's commissioners. The children's commissioners only can act if the child contacts them themselves. How many groomed um, or suppressed children can actually do that? You know, the protection of children has to come from the people, really, and that's what things like this, things that PCP Wales are doing, are absolutely highlighting it, and in the right way, education, allowing people to see it and read it for themselves. And sadly, the norms, as I call them all too frequently, uh, just think that everyone's a conspiracy theorist. And, you know, I'm sure they thought that hundreds of years ago when they were burning witches that floated. And we all know how that turned out. So, you know, maybe people need to start educating themselves a bit. And hopefully, I mean, it was a good turnout today. There's, you know, lots of people that are getting behind it. Hopefully it will start opening the eyes of a few more people to go, like, this is a problem. So, you know, if it's not... If it's not the jab, if it's not some indictment on our freedoms, it's it's all geared towards the control of our children because what a lot of people don't understand is is if we control and manipulate the children, they'll grow up into adults that can be controlled and manipulated. And if the state is, is nannying us and is parenting us and is telling us that sexualising children is okay, we should not be blindly going along with it because the 1% or 2% tell us to. We need to understand that our own impetus in this and, and act. Um, fair play to Public Child Protection Wales with what they're doing with the legals. Obviously now it's all been passed over, so you know they've got all the press releases and all the fun stuff, but we really in Scotland and England and Ireland, we need to follow Wales' suit and support them. Well, it's, it, well, it's coming to England, Scotland and Ireland uh, very shortly. Well, probably within the next 12 months where the opt-out is, is uh, not going to be an option. Yeah, mandatory. It's, it, it is. It's not going to be an option for for parents, yeah. and I feel that that's a loss of parents' rights. Yeah. It's a loss of children's innocence. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, I'm afraid it, it, if England and Scotland and Ireland don't get behind Wales with this court battle, then I'm afraid this could all be lost. Mm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Because this is the last chance to do something, really. I think. Well, I think it's like any infectious disease, paedophilia. I think where it spreads into everything into the way now that we educate um, then that moves into the policies that you know has been said of safeguarding the loss of innocence in this country has become massive with the growth of the internet but really you know as other people have said it is in our control to protect our children and as you just mentioned there the rollout at the moment in the uk which is why i'm jumping up and down so i'm saying to people in england you can opt out now 
in six months' time, you're not going to have the opportunity. There isn't exactly. going to be the chance. And, you know, when you're creating templates and you're telling people this is something that was created in Israel, you know, oh, we don't like Israel because what they've done to Palestine. But you've let them write our educational programme towards sex education and lowering the age of consent. People are so stupid. They'd never lower the age of consent, consent to 10. Well, when it was 21, they said that they'd never lower it to the age of 16, but they did. And at 16, we all know because it's statistically proven now that if children, child on child, have sex below the age of 16, it's no longer seen um, as a sexual offence in the same way because what they're doing is they're going, oh, it's just children and it's education, and that's what they've done. They're blaming teenage pre pregnancy on the reason why they need this RSE. What they're negating is teenage pregnancy happens to children that are of sexual age in order to procreate. What this is doing is targeting children that don't even have sexual thoughts because they are not skilled and competent. And I think that's what a lot of people are forgetting. You can't get on a bus on your own, you know, until you get into secondary school at 11 years old, yet we're expecting children to take responsibility, not only for their bus pass, but for their sexual health. And, you know, as I've mentioned earlier on when I was giving my speech, this is getting worse, it's just spreading into the NHS, and that's what scares me. It's, it's again, that you're saying about taking away parental rights. You're, you don't have parental rights in the school anymore. Social services are moving into the schools to make sure your children have their sexual rights, and now the NHS will be able to give your children drugs for sexually transmitted diseases that they have got through grooming, but it will be okay because they are allowed to be sexualized from birth. So we really need to level it up. Are you okay with your child having syphilis, gonorrhea, you know, chlamydia, and you know, at the age of 10, is that, is that something you're happy with? Because that's what's gonna happen. And the saddest thing is, is for all the children that have been taken into care, the reason that they will, the way that they'll sell the lowering of the age of consent is because at the moment in the British law courts, children aren't recognized as having their own voice until they're 16, which means that a lot of children that wanna be returned home aren't because the court doesn't recognize them as being able to think for themselves. So then you have something called gillic competence. So psychologically we're going, okay, this child can speak for itself, which means that if they've been successfully groomed, they can say that they weren't abused. Similarly, children that want to go home, they'll say, well, they're below the age of 16, we have to act in their best interest. If they lower the age of consent, all of you parents that have had your children taken away and they lower it to 10, your child will be able to speak for itself. So you're going to believe that that will mean that your child has the right to come home. So you will agree with this new policy. And that's where the horrible, the shift is. Because I'm already hearing advocates speaking and saying, saying, oh, well, at least children will be able to be released home from the social services if they lower the age of consent. And it's like, well, no, we shouldn't. That shouldn't be a question. We shouldn't, we shouldn't be swapping one for the other. Innocence is innocence. Childhood right. is childhood. And it only happens, you know, until the age of 18. And then, you know, they've got the rest of their lives to be miserable. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I am going to end it because my limit... Yeah my limit on you uh, it is four and a half minutes <laughs> no 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 it, it's uh, well well thank you thank you for the interview amazing love you, I, I love I loved your speech oh, thank it, you, it was Phil. brilliant love you uh, always. and I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again oh shortly. very soon at the next one definitely yeah <laughs> thank all you, right Phil. thank you